Welcome to another Gibbs Cam version 14 tutorial. This is going to be your very first mill part. So I'm going to drag the print that we're going to do over to the screen. And this is the part we're going to do. It's a part that's about four and three quarter square and one inch thick. Now we're going to use an inch and a quarter material because we need something to hold on to to face it off and finish it and then of course you'd flip it over and face off the back side and, and uh, deburr it. You can see I have the stock outline here and you can see all the dimensions come from this point right here and I'm going to call that X0, Y0. That's where I'm going to put my origin right now. And the reason I'm putting my origin there is because all the dimensions come off that but that is not the place that I am going to machine from. When I put this out on my CNC machine, I'm going to move my origin over to here. And in Gibbs, it makes it real easy. You can be all done programming, everything ready to go, and post the code. You just, with a couple of mouse clicks, select this point over here, post the code, and you're ready to go. But it's easier to start with uh, all the dimensions coming from your X0, Y0, Z0, right from the here where the engineer and draftsman drew all the dimensions from. Makes it much easier than have, having to back calculate everything here. So you can see our stock size is four and three quarter square. I'm going to remove this so you can take a screenshot of that if you missed it. So I'm going to go to my document control first. You can see I started a mill part. I just called it first mill part. And your screen may or may not look like mine, that's fine. Just make sure you choose a three axis vertical mill from the drop down menu. And we're going to choose aluminum alloys rot. That's your standard 60, 61, 70, 70 75, etc. So if you look at your print, you'll see the X maximum here is uh, one and three quarters. So if our part's four and three quarters overall, if you want, you can do. Uh, minus four and three quarter plus one three quarter that comes out to three inches okay minus three inches so the y max uh, is going to be two inches so that leaves uh, minus two and three quarter on there that makes it four and three quarter by four and three quarter now the z stock i'm going to face off twenty thousand so i'm going to put twenty thou in there and since my stock is inch and a quarter, that means what's left is going to be minus 1.230. One Cat 40. You can see drop down of anything you want to use. Programming in inches. And I'm going to have my clearance at 0.1. Now, beware of this clearance means if your tool, tip of your tool is at this clearance point, can you move it around this part and not hit anything like bolts, nuts, clamps? If you have bolts and nuts and clamps sticking up, you want to make sure this is higher because this is where the tool is going to go before it rapids around. So make sure that's clear. Um, part offset, don't worry about this. This is more for when you're doing machine sim. But we're all good right here. So I'll close this menu. And now everybody's screen should look like mine. So the first thing we're going to do is draw as many points as we can using X, Y, and Z before we start drawing any circles on here. So I'm going to hide my grid. Just kind of get it out of the way. It makes it a little easier. Okay, bring up our geometry palette. And we're going to pick the point command because that's what we're going to draw. Point at X, Y, Z. And my very first point is going to be at 0 and 0. And Z0, we're going to draw everything at the top, so make sure Z is always 0 there. So there's our first point there. All right, our next point is going to be, if you look at your print, 0 and Y is going to be 1.625. You can either press Enter or the space bar either way. depends on how fast you are with your keyboard. Okay, the next dimension is going to be um, X0 and minus 1.410. Next one's going to be x0 and minus 2.340. Next point's going to be minus 1.910. And find that dimension, minus, sorry, 0.880 positive. And I believe the last one's going to be minus 2.2. .2. 
and minus 1.870. All right, that should have a six points in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the next thing you want to do is draw as many circles as you can around those points. So I'm going to pick the circle command and I'm going to pick this far left one that says radius and center point. So I'm going to start just right in the middle. You can start anywhere you like, but I'm going to start right in the middle. So if I look at my print, I have a dimension at 1.340. Make sure you click the double circles to stay in that command. Next one is 1.466. Those are the two circles from there. Two circles from here is going to be 0.770 and 0.896. All right, this one here is going to be 0.188 divided by 2. That's the holes that are going to go in there. And the next one as well, we'll just walk around the part there a little bit and then. The print says all outside fillets 190, so I'm going to type in 0.190. Again, I'm just going to go around this part here. And now I have about as many circles as I can draw on there. Now I'm going to draw some lines off here. As you can see, your print it has these little ears sticking off here and here. It has one over here as well, but this is a little too hard to calculate and do a little math on there to get the angles correct. So I'll show you an easier way to do that. So I'm going to pick up the line command. And this time I'm going to pick the third one over that says tangent to a circle. And it wants you to select the circle. Let's select this. And if you look at your print, you'll see it's 90 degrees plus 37.5. Click the double lines to stay in there. And I'm going to pick this one. At the same time, I'm going to pick this one because it's the same angle. Okay, there's those two lines, and I'm going to pick the circle again. We'll start at the top. This time I'm going to do 90 plus, sorry, 90 minus 37.5. Okay, that's going to give me the angle there. And same thing over here. And as you can see, Gibbs is already starting to uh, trim our part there. Now next I want to copy that ear over to here. So I'm going to double click this. You can see it selects it all because it's all connected. I'm going to hold the control key down and select both these items because I want to copy them as well. I'm going to go to modify and do duplicate 2D rotate. I want to rotate this around X0, Y0 right there. 2D rotate. I want to do it. If you look at your print, you can see it's three degrees off of zero, so that means it's 60 degrees clockwise one time. If I close this, you can see it just duplicated that over to here. So now we have our other ear. Now a couple more lines while we're at it. Let's do this one. We have an angle here of 45 degrees. One here at 100 degrees and one here at zero degrees. All right, now we have just about everything we need to start connecting our part up. So I have a document here. Let me show you. Gibbs Cam Geometry Connecting. There's construction points, which are yellow. You can see some on my part still right here. And there's yellow squares. Okay, I don't have any yellow squares yet. That usually means just one point is connected at one end of the line or circle. Blue square means it's connected, at, uh, two features are connected to it. And you see a blue square here, that means this line and this circle are connected to each other. So we don't have to uh, chain anything when we do the cam on here. So I'm going to start uh, with this. Let's move it off our screen. Now we're going to start to uh, draw one more circle, then we're going to start connecting up here. So I'm going to pick the, the draw the circle that's tangent to these two circles right here. So naturally we're going to pick the circle command. And there is no menu for it, so don't worry about it. Gibbs knows what you want to do. So click on this circle and this circle. You don't have to hold any keys down. Make sure you put in the correct radius in there, which should be 0.5. 
according to your print. We just need to do this one time, so we'll just click it one time. And it gives you four choices. Of course, pick the one you want to keep. And there you go, and you can see Gibbs already connected it and trimmed the lines. So now we can start walking around our part. So I'm going to do it the fourth way according to the geometry connecting. Um, this is going to be the fourth way. So pick the point command and do not pick any other menu. Select this circle and this line. No, no, don't need to hold any keys down. Click the double point so it stays in this command. We want to connect right there. And then next you can see it trim this circle over here, which is fine. Just click on it. Hold the control key down and press D for duplicate, just a shortcut. And this line here. And we'll walk around again. You can see it trimmed it again. So we'll do control D again. Okay, so far we're clear over to here. Now the tool needs to go down to here, which is a line. So I'm just going to pick line. There is no menu for a line that is tangent to two circles. So just pick the two circles. No need to hold any keys down either. And I want to go right there. So, so far our tool's gone around to this point. It gets to here, so let's do this again. The fourth way, pick the point command. Pick the double point, so I want to stay right here. Connect right there. And I'm going to duplicate this again over to here. And connect here. We're just following it around now. And connect there and there. And you can see the outside shape is done there. Now the print calls for 190 around all the corners. And so you can do it the hard way or the easy way. Now if I just want to draw one corner here, I can pick this command here and tell it I want to put a 190 fill it around there. Then I could do here, 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 but that takes quite a bit of time, especially if you have a lot of uh, radiuses to do. So the easy way to do that is just double click your shape, go to this chamfer and uh, fill it command, 190, click do it. You can see now it has 0.190 fillets all around our part. So pretty easy to do at this point. So now let's finish up this uh, circle that's on the right hand side, this pocket here. So again, I'm going to pick line command, no menu, pick this circle. This circle, Gibbs knows will you want to draw a line tangent to it. I'm going to do it keeping this menu. I want to pick that one there, but not this one, because if you look at your print, it's not it's tangent to here, but not tangent to this one. It's actually tangent from here to here. So I'm going to click this circle and this one. And Gibbs knows that invisibly the circle circles clear around. So it's going to automatically find that. Click that line. And there we go. So now I just need to connect it up here. Maybe I'll use the first way to connect up by holding control key down. Select this and this. While I'm there, just right click and click connect. And there are the right ones done. All I need right here is a fillet of quarter inch. That one's done. Okay, now the next left pocket's a little more difficult. It takes a little bit longer, but still pretty easy to do. If you look at your print, you'll see I need two construction lines off of this point. So I'm going to pick the line from a point and an angle. This one here is going to be 80 degrees. And this one's going to be another one, 170 degrees. All right, now we have our two construction lines there. Now from there, we're going to do parallel lines. So my first parallel line is going to be two inches. Click the double lines to stay in there. Okay, there's the first one off of this one. My next one's going to be 1.050. Whoops, I mistyped there. Sorry. Pick this line here. 0.625 then from here it's 1.050 up to there okay and the rest of these are quarter inch so quarter inch ok 
Okay, we have our part just about drawn. I need to draw this circle over here. So I'm going to pick the circle command from center point, this center point up here. And it's going to be three quarter. All right, now we have just about everything. I think we have everything we need to finish this pocket up here. So I'm going to get rid of these two construction lines. No longer needed. Pick the point command. No other menu. Just start connecting your... Uh, your part up. So I'm going to start there and there. Make sure you click the double points to stay there. Next two lines, next two lines, next two, next two, next two. Sorry, I missed that one. Okay, and next two. And that one. Whoops, sorry. Missed that point. Okay. All right, now you have the uh, pocket drawn on the left side. The only thing left is to put the quarter inch fillet everywhere. So again, I'm going to double click. 250 is already in there. And boom, I have this part pocket on the left side drawn. Now, if you, as I zoom up this little area, you can see on the print there's a hole right about here, and it's tangent. The center of the hole is uh, tangent to this line, this line, and this line. So I'm going to pick the circle command so it'll find the center for me. No menu to select, just select this line, this line, this line. And we'll just do it one time and you can see it gives me a number of choices. Of course we want this one here. And all we want on here is the center point. So I'm going to delete that. And let's draw the circle in there, which is supposed to be 3 eighths according to the print. So 0 0.1875. There's that. And the only thing left on this part to draw is the little circle right here. So I'm going to draw a line off here at zero degrees. And one line that's parallel off of this, eighth of an inch. Now I'm going to connect these two up so I have a point there. Okay, now I don't need these lines anymore, but I got my point now. I'm going to draw a circle. That's 0.188 divided by 2. And there you go. And there you have your part done. All ready to go. If you want, you can leave these points in. It won't hurt. Or you can choose to delete them if you want. Now there's other ways to trim if you like. Under the shape command, there's this trim menu here. And you can see there's... Uh, let me just hover over there. There's union, subtraction, intersection, trim in, trim out, and slice. So you have a number of, of, number of ways if you want to draw geometry doing that and then just uh, uh, kind of automatically trim uh, lines that are uh, sticking out too far or whatever. Um, I kind of prefer this way, but uh, everybody has their own way they like to draw. So you can see my origin is right there. I think I'll move the origin, now that I have it drawn, over to the top left corner. So if I open my document control, you can see the uh, origin over here is 3 inches from the X. So if I, uh, from this point over to here is 3 inches. From this point up to here and Y is 2 inches. So I'm just going to go to Modify, Move Part Origin. I'm just going to actually type in those values there. So I'm going to go minus 3 and 2. Click on do it. And as you can see now my origin is right there at the top left corner. Exactly where I want it. Okay. So that ends this tutorial here. The next uh, part 2 will be how we're going to machine this part. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.